So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan.
So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan. So much peace fills up the air. Ramadan, month of the Quran. I feel it inside me, strengthening my iman. But how I wish you'd be here with me all year around. Ramadan.
so much peace fills up the air Ramadan month of the Quran I feel it inside me strengthening my iman but how I wish you be here with me all year around Ramadan So much peace fills up the air Ramadan, month of the Quran I feel it inside me, strengthening my Iman But how I wish you'd be here with me All year around Ramadan So much peace fills up the air Ramadan, month of the Quran I feel it inside me, strengthening my Iman But how I wish you'd be here with me All year around Ramadan So much peace fills up the air Ramadan, month of the Quran I feel it inside me Strength Testing, testing, one, two, three Testing, one, two, three Can someone confirm that uh, my voice is clearly heard? Uh, yes, your voice is clear. Thank you, Dr. Baya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa musalim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to all participants. We may begin our talk today di Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We should like to express our grateful to Allah as today we are already approaching the second part, the second one third of Ramadan as today is the 11th day of Ramadan for this year. I would like to welcome everyone to all participants 
to the Ramadan CMA series uh, organized by IHK Unit Collective Medicine. Last week, we already covered the. You know, just request um, everyone to vote. Oh. Okay, thank you. Last week, the first series of Ramadan um, CME series organized by Kul um, IOHK Kulah Medicine already discussed about the health benefit during Ramadan, particularly in regard to Taraweh and also fasting. And today, we are going to proceed with the second topic, which is the preparation for fasting Ramadan and Taraweh for patients. I think this topic is very important for us as a healthcare providers to actually to give the correct consultation and also advices to our patients in regard for the appropriate preparation to make sure that the fasting and also the they can perform their taraweeh during Ramadan. And we're fortunate today, we have a very uh, respected speaker to actually share with us in regard to this topic. Before we proceed, I would like to introduce our speaker. Today, we have Assistant Professor Dr. Muhammad Shaiful Ehsan bin Shalihin. He is an RIUM Family Medicine Specialist, graduated with MBBS at RIUM back in 2009. His working experience include as a houseman in Hospital Queen Elizabeth, Kota Kinabalu, back in 2009, as an MO at Hospital Keningau Sabah for several years prior joining UIA in 2013. He pursued his study in Master of Medicine, Family Medicine, in which in 2018, he was awarded as the most outstanding candidate in the final conjoint examination and also awarded with book award during the 30, 34th IIUM Convocation 2018. Apart from being excelled in his career, he is currently a, the head of IOHK unit at Kulah Medicine and also actively involved in community um, community as a vice president of IIM Family Medicine Specialist Association. He's also advisor of IIM Medical Student Society and one of the ex-co member for alumni of IIM Medical Doctors. I believe with his experience seeing his patient every day in his clinic and also his active involvement with our society and community to understand the reality of our patients out there. So, without further ado, I would like to invite Assistant Professor Dr. Muhammad Shaful Ehsan to deliver his talk on preparation for fasting Ramadan and Taraweh for patients. Please welcome Dr. Shaful Ehsan. Alhamdulillah, Amin Ashaytan Rajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to all. Thank you very much, Dr. Bayah, for that kind, lengthy introduction. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, a young medical lecturer in the university. I would like to share a few uh, tips on preparing our patients for uh, taraweh as well as fasting in Ramadan. So I would say that this topic probably a little bit late as we're already entering a 10 Ramadan, almost entering to the second uh, third. Uh, part of the fasting Ramadan, but nevertheless, I believe there is no such thing as uh, late in our advice. I would I would say that this this session also can benefit for our patients in future in the subsequent Ramadan. Inshallah, if we given another opportunity by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to enter Ramadan again next year. So I, I just mentioned just now by Dr. Baya. Uh, so basically, uh, if you can see that uh, the topics in our CME Ramadan series for IOHK for this uh, year, you can see that the topic are quite correlated with each other, a little bit overlapping. But nevertheless, uh, I'm happy to know that we're already covering the medical benefits of Fasi Ramadan and also Taraweh for our patients. And definitely when we know that there are some benefits has been, been implied obligation uh, for fasting Ramadan for our Muslim patient, for our self as Muslim, and also is uh, Tarawa is considered Sunnah Mu'akkah, uh, the very highly recommended uh, optional ibadah for, for Muslim during fasting Ramadan, which is just confined with fasting Ramadan. I'm sure that we would like to prepare our self uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, so that we would do the, the ibadah, we can perform the ibadah in each manner and also in the perfect manner without any complications or without any side effects or without any injury. So therefore, I think this topic is, uh, is important, but I would say that it's not that easy as the topic is quite general. So I would include uh, some information from some guidelines, from other, from other consensus and also from, from our experience with our patients from, uh, from treating them. 
So considering about fasting in Ramadan, uh, I would like to share a few uh, tips or a few information, a uh, message from our Ministry of Health Malaysia, uh, meaning uh, 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 they highlighted that for those who are sick, eh, for our patients who are sick, fasting is not an obstacle to continue with the treatment. So adjustment can be made and patients must be sensitive to their health status and get ready to break their fast if needed. So there are two major important information here. The first one that I can actually digest it from this is that uh, patients with medications, with treatment, can still fast, but there are some modifications that need to make for their treatment so that they can be allowed to fast during the day. So meaning that there is some changes on the regime, on the, on the frequency, on the time that we give our patients for, to, for them to take their medications. Second, patients must be aware must understand themselves very uh, very good and also discuss with their medical providers in terms of their health status, either they are eligible or capable of doing the fasting. So they also need to know and understand themselves what would be the signs and symptoms that they need, they need to break their fast whenever that there are some warning symptoms or warning sign in, implying that they are having hypo or hyperglycemia and even dehydration. So these are the important message that I would like to share from our Ministry of Health Malaysia. So considering that possibility of complications that can arise in fasting or even doing physical activity, example, performing our very respectful ibadah tarawih that is just confined in Ramadan, I would say that the preparation from medical perspective, yeah, the preparation will be a lot from any perspective, from Islamic perspective, from your personal perspective, from your... um holistic perspective, but from medical perspective, I would like to discuss, would like to share, uh, I would like to chat with all of you with the three P's, eh? the three P's. The first P is preview. So we need to review ourselves, review the patients. The patients need to review themselves as well. They need to do self-reflections before they are eligible or they are capable of doing the fasting and also performing the taraweh. And second, the second P is practice, and we advise, we advise, and we would like to see what would be the outcome, and what would be the 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 the, the things that they have encountered during the previous experience by practicing uh, the, the 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 fasting and also the solar. And third, what would be the precautions or the modifications that need to to be, to be done, it to be to be made in order as a preventive measures or precautions measures to avoid any uh, injury or any uh, uh, bad effects or any uh, bad uh, incidents during this um, uh, ibadah. So these are the three P's that I think can be highlighted under the title of today's CME, which is preparation for our patients. So looking at the preview, I think patients need to, to identify themselves whether they are eligible for fasting in Ramadan, either they are capable of doing prolonged continuous taraweh, example up to 20 raka'ah uh, as a congregational prayer at most in the masjid. So these are the, the questions that the patients need to ask and also need to identify themselves with the help of medical doctors if possible and also with the help of their previous experience and also their knowledge of their uh, own self and also on comorbidities. So uh, considering about the next week topic will be the who cannot fast for medical reason will be the another title by Dr. Noor Asikin from Department of ONG. I'm not going to touch in detail about the, the eligibility criteria for our patients, but I just would like to touch in general in terms of uh, previewing or reviewing a patient status in terms of their eligibility and capability of performing either fasting or taraweh. So we're looking at the biological, social, and psychological. I'm not including spiritual here because it is compulsory. Nothing need to be nothing to be to be questionable, as it's compulsory for all Muslims to do fasting in Ramadan if capable. And also is and sunat muakkah or, or even uh, is highly recommended optional ibadah for taraweh for our Muslim patients. So from three point of view, it's the biological, social, and psychological. I'll talk about biological later, but in terms of social, we are looking at the patient's daily functions, the patient's physical activity. Some patients having a job that require high intensity uh, of physical movement that can lead to increase in the rapid heart rate. The, the, heart, the heart rate can, can reach even more than 70% of the maximum heart rate can cause them to become 
breathless can cause them to become highly energy consumption. So I, 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 the patients are actually involved in this group of occupation or physical activity daily uh, in terms of labor, physical activity. So these are the things that need to be considered and also need to be included. I would say that there is no single factor that is dominant. It needs to be um, holistic in identifying our patient status. Uh, about the psychological, I think it's more relevant for our pregnant mothers who might be worried, might be worried of themselves, of the, of the health status of the pregnancy, as well as the, the status of their intrauterine uh, pregnancy, intrauterine fetus. So in terms of their health status and their fetus health status. So this can be considered psychological. So when looking at the biological, so what are the things that we can cover and also need to be discussed with our patients in terms of the contraindications? looking for the health status components and also about the presence of any risk factors that the patient can develop. Example, in fasting, the risk to develop hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. Our patient might be having risk of dehydration or even syncope from hypotension or the fluid loss. Any risk of worsening morbidities because of reduced fluids, because of, of overload with sugar and so on. And in terms of performing ibadah of taraweh, and usually it will be in a standing position, and even in a prolonged uh, raka'ah or even to, to up to 20 raka'ah conventionally. If you're looking at our patients, are there in the group of elderly patients? Uh, is any risk of fall or frailty? Our patient has history of fracture or any injury before, so any risk of musculoskeletal injury and that they have currently, and also risk of hypoglycemia and hydration if they not do any precautions before performing this prolonged ibadah or prolonged activity uh, at Isha and after Isha. So these are the possible uh, things that we can discuss with our patients or the patients can actually stratify themselves with the help of medical doctors. So performing Taraway, especially, is very good. As we mentioned just uh, uh, last time by Dr. Aminuddin in terms of medical benefits, uh, even one rakaah itself can actually burn up to four to five calories. So if the patient's performing continuously uh, of 20 rakaah uh, of taraweh every night daily, so it's during that night, so it can be actually accumulated up to 100 and even 200 uh, calories burned. And, it, and it's require a lot of movement as well as um flexibility of the joints of our patients. So there are a lot of rahmah and hikmah of performing taraweh, and but there also need to be some precaution for certain group of patients. So uh, I would like to just uh, share, I also would like to um, try to, to generalize these components. I know it's related with diabetes. So this is the one that actually uh, I, I'm taking from uh, International Federation of Diabetes uh, Association. But I can see that we can actually somehow rather match match the details to other patients in terms of other diseases and comorbidities. So the, for example, the, the, the disease control status right now, uh, what will be the current control of our patients? Do we have any worsening condition at this point of time that might actually cause uh, uh, the condition to become worsening or even bad uh, in terms of the progress if they are fasting? or even any injury that they have that can lead to more complications or more injury if they perform long standing or long movement in the congregational setting. So these are related with the disease itself related factors and what are the medications that the patients carry on. Are the patients require five times daily, six times daily? Is it require a continuous dialysis? So all these are the things that we need to consider and might be considered as rosa for them not to fast if it's actually require uh, dialysis or changing of fluid infusion during the day. Another is about the patient's factor itself. What will be the patient age? I'm sure that extreme age in elderly patients, sometimes they don't have that uh, enough energy or enough um, um, sustainability to continue with the fasting during the day about the patient occupation, I mentioned a lot about, about the patient's social activities and also about the patient previous meal patterns that could be caused a risk of hyperglycemia if they're not changing and not do, do some preview or review before patients uh, entering into Ramadan. So these are the possible components that we actually can uh, discuss with our patients with other diseases as well, not only diabetes. Uh, so these are the further components from the uh, from the uh, table just now. So we can see that the control of the disease status, 
uh, any history of hypoglycemia before and are the patient aware of that? So the patient awareness of hypoglycemia is also one of the important factors to say that patient at risk to develop hypo or not later on with complications and so on. The patient renal function status is also important and also patient's uh, physical activity, frailty and cognitive function. So that's much more related with elderly patients. And also patient's physical activity intensity, either is low, moderate or high. Uh, and this is quite difficult to, to, to subject it to divisions, but usually we're talking about uh, the metabolic equivalent rate and also the patient maximum heart rate is it achieved and also patient condition while doing the doing the physical level. So this can be highlighted in terms of uh, in terms of the, the category of the physical activity that the patient have. So all these we're talking about the patient's profiles, demographic data in terms of age, gender, the patient's social occupations, physical level, and also the patient current health status. So I think it will be specialized and individualized. Uh, for our patients when we need to discuss with patients, either we give options for them uh, and it's up to a shared decision making, it's up to the patient's right to, to choose and usually we advise the best for them, for their best interest of the patient. So other, other disease that we're talking, we're talking about uh, physical movement in prolonged raka'ah and prayers in Taraweh. We're also looking at patients' musculoskeletal injury, what would be the current uh, health status in terms of muscle and also joints that the patient have. So is there any deformity that enable them to prolong standing, for example? Any risk of instability and fall? Is the patient is currently having pain and also fasting and after that need to do that away? And also are the patient currently in a post-op condition that in the recovery phase that not allow them to be on weight-bearing condition, meaning it's not understanding. So there are some modifications that can be made our patients in order to allow them to, to do this ibadah as well. And also in terms of our important organs, everything is important, but one that I would like to highlight is the heart-related conditions and cardiovascular risk. So we need to look at the patient's uh, classification in terms of the effort and activity, either they are in the moderate, in the, in the good condition, depending on the classifications, are uh, they currently in the breathlessness or unstability, or they require some continuous uh, fluid uh, or even some restriction of fluid optimization of the blood volume in order not to cause them for energy ischemia or failure or co compromise their heart condition. So this also needs to be taken care of, need to be to, need to be stratified by the medical doctors with our patients in order to you know the patient's uh, capability and eligibility to be discussed. Uh, why I'm talking about this is because um, there are uh, rusa or even um, uh, some exceptionals for our patients in order for them not to fast. As been highlighted in the fatwa from Jackin, that uh, there are conditions whereby that the patient condition can become worsening or even can cause more complications or even can lead to mortality or death. So it's actually considered compulsory for our patients to break their fast or even not to join the fasting, uh, uh, the fasting uh, 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 during Ramadan. However, this is better when the patients got uh, the patient receive the medical advice as self from the medical doctors, which can give more points towards their uh, their um, uh, indications or their their rusa not to fast during this at this moment. And furthermore, about Salat Taraweh, uh, as, as we mentioned just now, it's highly recommended, uh, optional of uh, Ibadah for our patients. But it can also be done even at home, uh, also alone or even not in congressional uh, condition. So meaning that there are some modifications that our patients need to make according to their current health status in order not to cause worsening injury or worsening condition to them. So if it feels that like it's better for them to do it in alone or even at home with their family members around in the more safety uh, condition in a more uh, pleasant uh, in a more comfortable area you know in the form that they can they can get access for help from the family members i think it's, it can be done yeah uh, because uh, it's been allowed even in our uh, guidelines in our uh, islamic guidelines you know to be can be done either it's congregational or so informed in to be done as alone and uh, obviously, the best is basically to do uh, as in uh, congregational at, at masjid in mosque, uh, but it's also been allowed to do as uh, individual at home uh, if patient 
are in the condition that unable to to perform cognition prior at, at most as been highlighted in uh fat in also in the majlis fatwa uh, uh wilayah persekutuan as been highlighted by datuk sulukifi muhammad al bakri uh that uh, the taraweh can be done either in alone or in the congregational, but the after or the, the one that is better is always congregational for our taraweh prayer. Uh, in terms of, of praying in a sitting position, right, requiring a chair, so we can see that some people require a chair, and uh, yeah, especially during these prolonged standing moments and during the prolonged ibadah time. So it's actually st still allowed in our religion according to patient's uh, capability. Uh, as been highlighted in the fatwa, and even in our, in our, in according to the hadith, Abu Wa'il Al Bukhari, um, has been highlighted in this, in this ayah, bersolatlah secara berdiri jika tidak mampu lakukanlah secara duduk dan jika tidak mampu lakukanlah secara mengiring. So meaning that the patient can still perform the ibadah at, at any position that is uh, that is suitable for them according to their injury and current health status. Either they need to to standing, sitting, or lying on their side. Eh? So also in uh, as in accordance with this uh, ayah and also hadith, solatlah kamu dalam keadaan berdiri, sekiranya kamu tidak mampu untuk berdiri, maka solatlah dalam keadaan duduk, dan sekiranya tidak mampu untuk solat saya duduk, maka solat di atas lambung. So this is quite similar with the hadith just now. I mean, highlighted even in our jakim, and also in Mufti Wilayah Kepestuan Office, um, there are a reason why certain patients are unable to stand during 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 praying, and is allowed uh, to be done in the sitting position for those that are unable to stand. Possible, just now I mentioned just now, post-op, non-wipering face, or they have some injury over their knees, or over the lower limbs. They have a condition that can become worsening if they're allowed to be standing quite long. Uh, or even they have some syncope or autostatic hypotension yeah, that can be happen if patient standing quite long. So it can be allowed uh, in our religion as well, even medically. So, Preview also can be covering about the needs for medical visits prior to Ramadan because sometimes we might be uh, forgot about what are the changes that have been done last year. So sometimes if we're not uh, doing the medical visits prior to Ramadan, sometimes we're already entering Ramadan, we might do our self-modification alone and it could be right, it could be wrong. So therefore, it's good to get the advice from our medical doctors earlier before fasting Ramadan so that the medical doctors can discuss important points in terms of precautions that can be done in, in order to sweep the patients to perform fasting and taraweh. So this include medication regimens that I mentioned just now about the time and frequency, the meal planning especially that the patient can take during breaking the fast and also during saho. What important is that not to take high sugary intake, try to avoid a simple carbohydrate component. It should be balanced, consists of complex carbohydrate, protein and fat, but we advise more on to take off a complex carbohydrate and fiber because this will be digested in a longer time and can produce more longer energy for our patient and avoid a sudden uh, spike of hyperglycemia in our patient because when there's a sudden spike, a sudden increase of glucose, that will lead to sudden drop of glucose after that and patient can develop sleepiness and also become more lethargy. And also appropriate timing of intensity of exercise. So we want our patient to be physically active even during Ramadan, this can be applied in the Taraweh as well. But for those patients that really like to do jogging, walking, brisk walking, even during the day, it can be advised usually about one hour before the breaking fast. So these are the, the, the modification that need to be done. And we must make sure that our patient during that time as does not have any symptoms to suggest dehydration or hypoglycemia. Uh, and also need to ad advise on blood glucose monitoring, especially for our diabetic patients on a certain value related with the mean, for example, before saho, after saho, and also before breaking the fast and after fast in order to see about the, the fasting value and also postprandial values. And also need to educate our patient regarding our uh, symptoms of hypo and hyperglycemia and to recognize and also empower them if they develop any acute complications to break the fast and seek treatment immediately to the nearby clinic or emergency department. So these are the symptoms of uh, awareness that we would like to empower our patients as one of the preview and preparation before fasting, which include symptoms of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. It can be overlapping, but most of the time, if patients feel extreme hungry, confused, and also dizziness, drowsiness, or cold sweat, it could be related with hypoglycemia. But if patients feel very thirsty and frequent urination, it could be hyperglycemia. But nevertheless, it can be overlapping. 
So I just would like to share a bit regarding this review that I actually taking from the flow in the diabetic patients. So it be suggested that the best is about uh, four to six weeks before Ramadan for the preview of the patients before the entering to fasting Ramadan, looking at the patient health status just now, the, the patient's blood pressure control and also comorbidity controls so that we can actually stratify our patient and advise for other modification that can be done before entering fasting Ramadan. So under preview as well, is the medications either need to be changed and, and uh, other regimen need to be modified for a while while in fasting Ramadan. So I think we are aware that some patients have very simple regime. Some patients have quite complex regime consisting of oral as well as injection medication. So here are the suggested instruction in general. Yeah, in general means that it's not been applicable to all, but in general these are the quick advice or the quick change that can be taken for our patients if they would like to take it in order to continue with fasting, meaning not to take the medications pills during the day. Yeah? So example, I give example like one times a day, once daily. So depending on the, the, the medication that you take before meal or after meal. So it can be taken, example, for before meal, before saho. So after meal, after 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 breaking uh, the, the, uh, the breakfast, after breaking the, the fast, after, after or even after uh, iftar. So it depends on the patient's preferences, either to take during the night or during the day, depending as well on the dynamic of the uh, mechanism of the function of the medication as well. So three times daily. So these are examples of suggested uh, regime. So if let's say that the medications all need to be taken before meal, so one hour before saho, after iftar and before the patient going to the bed after performing tarawih during the midnight. If not so if after meal, it can be taken after saho, after iftar, and also as before going to bed and have some uh, need uh, meals before going for the bed to take food in advance before going to the bed. So these are the modifications that can be done. It's quite complex for those patients that have four times a day, five times a day. So depending on the disease, so I think it could be possible example in the insulin injection uh, of diabetic patients, for example. So there are certain medications need to be omitted. An example like insulin during the lunch need to be omitted as do definitely patient not taking any meals during the lunch, but it can be covered with other dose during um, basal insulin during the night and also can be do some modification in terms of the pre-saho and also for pre-dawn pre, uh, uh, meal or pre-breakfast meal for our uh, patients uh, for the changing of the, the regime. Some might ask me about those patients that are already on um, 24 hourly medication, but during that time they are taking that during the day, right? Example, some, some condition that cannot be have any delay even minutes. Uh, for the medication to be complied to maintain a certain control of their disease. Yeah? Example, patient on uh, RBD status and so on that usually they take on time and they don't want to, to risk have the risk of uh, increase in the viral load if they're not complying with the, with the time. So I think it needs to be discussed uh, with the, the, the doctors that are treating the patients, looking at the viral load, uh, is it okay or not to change for a while in fasting Ramadan so that uh, patient can still have benefit of fasting while complying to the treatment at this at a new regime to be started at night. Uh, so this is similar with I mentioned just now uh, in terms of medication regime that need to be take, to be changed. Just now it's about the time to be take. Either it's before saho after either it's uh, before saho after saho after breaking uh, the fast. Now it's about uh, the medications either we need to change the dose or not. So for example, in anti-diabetic agent or oral hypoglycemic agent, not much changes for metformin, but for those that can risk of hypoglycemia, example, sulfonylureas, uh, possible we need to reduce the dose or omit the dose, especially uh, for those patients that not taking much meal during sahu. Huh? So it can be, can be reduced or omit accordingly. In, I'm talking about the insulin just now already. So usually for insulin, uh, we uh, advise our patient not to take any insulin during the day. So it just left with the insulin during the night, uh, during breaking the fast and during saho. So at least that will be the regime for our patient, especially for those on previously on basal bonus. So now we come to the second P, which is practice. So practice makes perfect. So we need to look at our patient's practice before this. What would be their experience uh, in terms of uh, performing fasting during, uh, during optional, op 
optional fasting during uh, sun, uh, during uh, Monday as well as Thursday option, optional fasting days. So if they experience any hypoglycemia, what would be their uh, reflection on that on that fasting? Is it they become comfortable? This they sweet they they able to change their medication regime for that moment? How they do they feel? So this can give experience can give more information about the patient's current capability of performing the fasting. So I would say that practice meaning that practice process sunat uh, the optional of what fasting before Ramadan can give more information in terms of the patient history, what are there any occurrence of hypoglycemia or other injury that they can have during that time. Uh, and also ask them about the previous practice of solat jama'ah or long-standing praying at home. Are they feel safe? Are they have any injury? Do they have symptoms of hypotension, orthostatic hypotension? Do they have some severe knee pain, leg pain, or any varicosity or edema? That become worsening. So these are the things that we can ask our patient based on their practice before this. Because prayer, we do it daily. So definitely there are some prayer that is quite prolonged. There are certain rakaah that quite pro that, that there are certain prayer that require four rakaah. So we ask them about this is these symptoms or any features that cause them uh, have any obstacles. They can share with us and we can actually discuss with them what are the modifications that can be done. Last but not least is the third P, which is precautions or modifications that need to be advised. So I would say that it's, it's important to do some modification for our patients, to all our patients, uh, regarding their diet regime. If we advise them to, to perform early breaking fast because if they, and also late saho, to practice late saho and early breaking fast. So not to delay their breaking in fast uh, during the appropriate time after entering Maghrib and to, 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 to delay their meals during saho because this can actually sustain more uh, energy food consumption for them, which can be more sustainable for that duration of fasting. So it can reduce further injury, uh, further risk of hypoglycemia and dehydration. Uh, the choice of foods and drinks, I mentioned just now, is good for them to take more of complex carbohydrate and to avoid a high sugar sugar drinks and to avoid simple carbohydrates during 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 the meals because it can lead to sudden increase sudden spikes of hyperglycemia and sudden crash of glucose which can lead to further sleepiness and that's why we realized that some patients initially had ambition to perform taraweh but after breaking the fast they feel more lethargy and they end up with lying on the on the chair only and without doing the optional prayers because they feel tired that possible because of taking too much high sugar during breaking the fast uh, uh, at one time. So in if we have the tendency, or if the patient have the tendency to still take some simple carbohydrate, advise them not to take it during empty stomach at one time. Meaning that the, the, meal, the, the, the drinks or the sugar or the simple carbohydrate need to be taken with other kind of meal as well. Example, protein, fat, or other fibers so that it can be digested quite longer time and does not lead to sudden spike of glucose high in our blood in the blood of the patients. In terms of modifications or precautions that they can actually practice while performing solat taraweh is that there's a possibility of using a chair for those patients who have some musculoskeletal injury, musculoskeletal pain that is unbearable if they need to be standing quite long. Possible, they need someone to accompany them, especially elderly patients, especially those at risk of fall, so that if anything happens, there's already uh, immediate um, action can be done by the caretakers, by the family members, and to send them to the appropriate clinic if possible. Uh, nowadays, we can see that a lot of mineral water being provided during taraweh, uh, during, during in the masjid, so that the patients can drink accordingly after each solar. So I would say that is a good advice, right? If not, then the patient can bring their plain water because the fluid maintenance still need to be advised even during fasting, even during taraweh. So the fluid maintenance depending on the patient's current weight. So it can be from ranging from two liters to three liters. So that equivalent to about from uh, eight glass of water to 12 glass of water. So we need to advise them on how to comply with this number of glass accordingly and try to dif divide uh, evenly during uh, the night, during the during waking up from sleep and so on, so that it can, can have continuous supply of water, meanwhile patient are uh, allowed to do that during the night. And this can lead from prevention from dehydration or hypotension if patient need to take 
the patient need to perform taraweh quite long time uh, during after isha and not to force themselves if they feel that they are already tired it's okay it's okay to stop for a while even at masjid so they can actually catch up later at another rakaah meaning that they need to, need to stop for a while if they feel tired uh, if they feel they need to rest for a while and sometimes it could we advise our patient to 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 apply some orthotic inserts examples uh some something that is like cushion something that can actually avoid uh, uh overload pressure to their knees to their soles so that become more comfortable and avoid uh injury during long standing and also uh, uh during walking and also movement uh, during the ibadah Uh, it's been highlighted in the journal that there is some efficacy of applying foot orthosis and shock absorbing insoles for our patients to prevent injury. And the efficacy is actually more uh, towards uh, overall injury scores as well as uh, stress fractures, but not much on the soft tissue injury. So I would say that there are still some benefits of applying these uh, orthotic ins uh, insoles. Um, and it could be individualized. Some patients will have some benefits, some will not but it's good to try if they they have this some risk of uh stress fractures and also a risk of any overall injuries from prolonged standing and also prolonged mobilization and also movement another one is about compression stocking so some patient will have some edema some will have a risk of varicosity being so it can become worsening if prolonged standing and so on so there are also studies showing that there's a good efficacy of uh, of applying compression stockings especially for our elderly patients uh, but uh, the efficacy does not in line with the, the compression pressures that have been applied so as long as there's a compression stockings either it's a grade one or grade two there's still some benefits to to reduce the symptoms of chronic penis insufficiency in our patients and therefore reduce the risk of thrombosis. Uh, how's about post prenatal fatigue? I mentioned just now that it could be because of improper meal plan during breaking the fast, right? So sometimes we are, have a very high desire when we're looking at very uh, tempting high sugar foods and high sugar drinks. We, we're really looking at that and we would like to actually try that one as one of our earliest meal. Uh, earliest drink during breaking the fast, but it actually can lead to sudden spikes of sugar I mentioned just now and can lead to postprandial fatigue, sleepiness, and also lack of energy. So it's good that if, if patients need to take that uh, drinks as well, it must be together with other kind of meals so that our, our uh, GIT system would digest that foods and drinks quite longer time because when there's a sudden extreme spikes of sugar, it can lead to sudden crashes of blood sugar and this will be related to uh, responsible for reduced in concentration effort and also leads to sleepiness to our patients. Uh, as been highlighted in our religion from our Quran, even in Sunnah, the best is actually moderation. So uh, we need to be uh, moderate in choosing our food, not to be excessive and not to take excessive sugar whenever that we would like to break our fast and been highlighted in this Ayah Surah Al Furqan Ayah verses sixty seven dan orang orang yang apabila membelanjakan harta mereka tidak berlebih lebihan dan tidak pula uh, di tengah uh, tidak pula kikir dan sesungguhnya pembelajar itu di tengah tengah adalah yang terbaik khairul umur ausatha sebaik baik perkara adalah yang pertengahan. How about uh, tama? How about taking dates uh, during breaking the fast. So actually tama or dates have a lot of benefits in terms of the nutrients in high in uh, calcium, zinc, potassium, and some other micro micronutrients as well. And also high in carbohydrate uh, uh, intake. Uh, it been been spelled out in terms of the food exchange. Two large dates can actually provide around 20 gram of carbohydrate. So when we do a food exchange uh, table, it actually almost similar to a medium slice of bread. Meaning that need to be moderate in taking the tama. If and it's good that if we take a large amount of tama, it should be together complement with other large meal as well, so that it does not lead a sudden increase in sugar during our empty tama. So one or two days is is quite um quite um. Uh, reasonable, 
uh, if more than that, we need to be complement with other kind of meat so that it does not lead to a sudden spikes of sugar in our blood. So I think that's it. That will be the, the precautions in general. So that will be the, the preparations, the preview, the review, the practice itself, and also the modification precaution measures that we can actually uh, give prescription to our patients as preparation for Ramadan for Taraweh. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Baya. I pass back the session to you. Hey, thank you very much, Dr. Shaifu, for very, um, I think, informative sharing. Okay, so we understand that every, even though Ramadan is actually an annual event, okay, every year we will be fasting and performing taraweh, but it's very important to make our patients understand that they are actually, their age increase, their disease progress, so the preview need to be done every year. Okay, so I'm open for any question if uh, our participants would like to ask any question to our speaker. You can write in chat or you can uh, ask on the microphone. Uh, I would like to thank all for staying until at this time. Eh? I know that it's near Solat Jumaah and everyone still stay until at this time. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate your, your cooperation. I think Dr. Baya, um, possible uh, uh, is we need to end earlier to for, to, for our okay. prayer. So if there's no burning question, I think there's no burning question, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so thank you very much for your attention and also particip uh, participation. Don't forget to complete or fill in the I attend for the attendance. Okay, and we also welcome and uh, encourage everyone to join our next session next Friday at the same time at 12 o'clock. With that, we may uh, close our session with Tazif Kafara and strong welcomes. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfirullah wa atuhu. Wal asin al-insar al-bihus al-ladhina aman wa'amu sa'ud. Wa sallam wa ta'u sabu sabzim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.